Yeah, I loan El Cash. About a hundred thousand dollars. That day we was due to have a little chat. The kid had hit his payback date, see? So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know. Real lucky. If that waitress hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over. Now, I see that the principal amount you loaned to Mr. L was $50,000. Yeah, well, you's got the, uh, the vig to take into account. Interest builds up fast, you know. That's faster than fast. $100,000 is twice as principal. And the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Yeah, he was one lucky kid. He got that half a million just in time. So I ain't have no reason to kill the kid. And if I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. His motive? Hmm, he has to have one, but what is it? Ba ba da ba. Hold it! The waitress, you mean? The girl with the glasses at the defendant's chair. Who else could I mean? If she hadn't gotten in the way, things would have been bada bing, bada boom, over and done with. Maybe I should push a little harder on, and push a little on this. What exactly are you implying the defendant did? How about you go ask Four Eyes about that half million dollar ticket? She wanted it so bad, she poisoned Elk's coffee. A likely theory. Your word hasn't held water lately, Mr. Tigre. Let's not forget this witness was actually at the scene, Trite. The law don't exactly agree with some of the deals I sent down. I couldn't be there when the cops showed up, so I split. I see. Your Honor. The witness's last few statements are worth a good two cups of coffee. I concur, Mr. Godot. You will amend your testimony accordingly, witness. Ha ha ha. So that's what you's after, Phoenix, right? Thanks to what she did, my business with that kid was over. Hold it! The tiger's trying to pin the crime on Maggie. If I ask him about what he saw, it's only going to damage our case. What do you mean things would have been over and done with? Are you all there or what? I'm talking about the cash. I was there to get my hundred thousand bucks back, that's all. I'm a businessman. I was- uh, it was all coming together before that waitress got in the way. Hmm. As far as I can tell from the witness's testimony, other than recouping his loan, Mr. Tigre had no motive for killing the victim. Well, Mr. Wright, are you happy with the testimony, or would you like to have it amended? I'm not going to get anywhere with the testimony as it stands. Your Honor, the defense would like the testimony amended. Very well. Witness, you will amend your testimony to reflect your recent statements, please. I was after the hundred thousand dollars. I didn't have no other reason to kill the guy. Really? OBJECTION! So you just intended to get back the hundred thousand dollars from Mr. Elg owed you, correct? I loaned the guy to cash, so that's my right. Unfortunately for Mr. Elg, I don't believe the hundred thousand dollars is what you were after. Objection. What are you getting at, Trite? What else would a money lender be after other than money? Oh, the money lender was after money, but money in a totally different league. The kind of money that a single disc like this would fetch. What is that? A computer virus, Your Honor. A virus called MC Bomber! A computer virus? What does one of those do? A computer virus is a program that wrecks havoc, <laughs> havoc on the insides of a computer. A computer? What does one of those do? I guess the beard isn't the only part of his honor that is from the Stone Age. I'll explain it to you later, Your Honor. Right now, this is the important point. A virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars on the black market. Several million dollars? Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business. 
but in this case, the very fact that Glen Elg had no way to repay the money is crucial. What? Glen Elg was a programmer, a highly skilled programmer. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elk put up in order to borrow the money. Objection! You're trying to suggest the witness's motive was to get a hold of that program? Exactly. The witness may have poor fashion sense, but he is by no means an idiot, right? A man like him could get his hands on one million dollars without resorting to murder. Of course he could, provided that he had time. But what if he had needed the money right then? When the pressure's on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. It seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? Why did Mr. Tigray need money to the tune of one million dollars? This is why. Take that! In December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? An accident involving a car and a scooter, in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital, where she underwent surgery. Where did you get all this info? These medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation cost one million dollars. Payment for these expenses was due in December of last year, and was paid in full. One million dollars? A preposterous sum! Someone should sue these HMOs! Ah, huh. no one would pay a bill like that. If the medical association got wind of it, the hospital would end up as dead as a morgue. But Mr. Tigre had no choice but to pay, because his very life depended on it! Order, order, order. You say his life depended on it, Mr. Wright. Indeed it did, simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cadaverini. Did you say Cadaverini? Bruto Cadaverini, mob boss in charge of all underworld activities of the city, and doting grandfather to his precious Violetta, also known as Viola Cadaverini. Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? Makes sense. You were desperate to acquire one, the one million dollars Cadaverini demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Gladon's life to pay your debt! On the day of the murder, Mr. Tigray's sole intention was to get his hands on this CD. Glen Elk had no way of paying back the hundred thousand dollars, and Mr. Tigray knew it. But, then a miracle happened. The kind that Mr. Tigre would prefer to say never happened, but he can't, and neither can I. The lottery win? Exactly! At the eleventh hour, Mr. Elg won half a million dollars on the lottery, which left Mr. Tigre with no way of getting his hands on the all-important CD. At least, no legitimate way. So he resorted to illegitimate means. That's crazy. He murdered Glenn Elg, and then made his next move. To frame Maggie Bird for the crime. Mr. Tigre posed as Glenn Elg. While Viola Cadaverini played the role of Miss Bird. And then they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. The witness being the one we heard or we all heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Kuda. Objection. Like I said, Trite, that's crazy. No one could pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chef could have been kept out of it. But Mr. Armstrong knew all about it! Have you forgotten already, Mr. Godot? Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money, too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tigray's plan! Order, order! Silence or I will clear the courtroom! <laughs> Yous put on a good show, Spikey. If yous wanna stay alive in the loan shark business, you gotta be careful. You saying I dressed up like that kid created a witness and framed someone? If I did something crazy like that, I'd leave a trail as bright as my shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. I agree. What? Despite your appearance, you are very careful. 
That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Miss Bird had no way out. What? Another one, Mr. Wright? Interesting. Why don't you fit us all in, Trite? What was this trick you say Mr. Tigray performed to frame the accused? Take that! What on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such childish imitation. Consider yourself insulted, Your Honor. Mr. Tigray, you didn't just pose as the victim on the day in question. A month ago, in this very court, you posed as me. What? That's... that's... the truth. But... the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Although... now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? No doubt it was you, standing in here, this very courtroom, a mere month ago. The Phoenix Wright who put up the most disreputable Chevy Duff bets I had ever seen. Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused here a month ago was this man. Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? Hmm. Hey. Forget about it, yeah? I wouldn't do something like that, not me. You. You made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? Have you no pride, sir? This isn't a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, Trite, here in court we deal with people's lives. Mr. Godot was right. Your Honor? Speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as the judge, with the vested power to hand down a verdict. Some one in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. No! If the defense has no further evidence, the court will now excuse the witness. The circumstances surrounding Mr. Tigray are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. But we've come so far. You say he impersonated Glenn Elg. You say he impersonated you. But none of that adds up to a murder charge. You don't have a shred of evidence that the witness poisoned the victim's coffee. Ha! <sighs> Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with the tiger or you's gonna get mauled, you's got that? All we managed to do here was chase him around a bit. But I was so close to getting him to admit his own guilt. Huh. Looks like I won't be needing a refill. If I just had one more piece of evidence, one more piece of evidence, and maybe I could get Maggie off the hook. This witness's cross-examination is over. You are free to go, Mr. Tigray. Hold it! You're on a s- Wait! Detective? Detective Gumshoe? Sorry I took so long, pal! I- I- I stalked everything on this. My badge, the works. So- here it is! My heart's counting on this, too! What is it, Detective? Isn't it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece of evidence! What? Well, then. Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results back from the lab! The results? About the prince, pal, from this medicine bottle. Oh, so do you know who the prince belonged to now? You think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of course I know. So, tell us. They're the tigers, right? I knew it. Hey, <laughs> you bet. Clear as crystal all over the bottle. Dear Furio Tigre's palm prince, all right. That's great. We've got him now, Nick. What's wrong with you? You've hardly said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here. He's laid everything on the line for this, Nick. 
I know. Look, I'm sorry. This is kind of hard to say, but... It really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on that bottle now. Huh? What? Why not? What we need to produce at this stage of the trial is irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Glen Elk's coffee. He's already admitted that he met the victim. The fact that his prints are on this bottle, that really doesn't make any difference now. I knew it. Great. No matter how hard I try, I never, never have any use. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. This was our last chance to help Maggie. And I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. It's alright. I'm a real loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. Detective Gumshoe? Maggie? You've been working on something for me? Sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. And I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry. I'll get out of your hand now. Detective Gumshoe, wait! He's gone. Isn't there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Gumshoe worked so hard to get that evidence. If only there was some way I could use it. Oh, we'll find a way. We will find a way. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? I granted you a recess so you could prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Um, yes. Don't keep us all in suspense, Trite. Show us. Naturally. We can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court, can't we? Think, Phoenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. How much more of my time are you gonna waste? I ain't been in no court before. But you's lawyers sure know how to blow things out of proportion. No doubt, given the nature of the evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence. I'm really backed into a corner here, but maybe if he thinks he's got me beat, he'll let his guard down a bit. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Present this final decisive piece of evidence to the court. Take that! This is the defense's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victim's? Your Honor... Naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tigre. What? But Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone in here knows what this bottle contains, except one man. One person in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. My prints are on that pansy-looking bottle? Is that what you're saying? Well, what the hell's in it, anyway? A phony trial, a phony lawyer, and phony clues. Everything about this case has been phony. Seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. Mr. Tigre, this is the decisive piece of evidence that will prove your guilt. Why? Because it contains... Potassium cyanide! This is the bottle containing... The potassium cyanide. Potassium cyanide? The poison used to murder Mr. Elg, Your Honor. The victim's killer used this very bottle. And on this bottle, Mr. Tigre, we found your prints. Well, how do you explain that? <laughs> You'd make a good clown, you know that. What? You say never gonna get this to stick. You's just making me laugh now. You think a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool the tiger? A bluff? I can see straight through you, Phoenix Wright. That ain't the bottle with the cyanide in it. No, oh, no. This is the bottle we found traces of the poison in. Don't mess with the tiger, or you's gonna get ripped to shreds. The cyanide bottle was brown and made of glass. That cheap piece of trash don't look nothing like it. Well then. I'm glad you brought this information to light. Um, uh, how the fuck did you know that? Got him. At last. What? 
Why has everyone gone quiet? I said that bottle... Is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle with the cyanide in it. But you ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. Don't let that cozy look at Sue fool you people. That lawyer's just playing games. Tell him... Uh, tell him, Gado. Tell that guy where to go. You still haven't figured it out. Don't you realize what you just said? What I said? What did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. Uh, God. But just now, you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison! You just don't know who you was messing with! I'm the tiger! I control millions of dollars on the black market! You just think I'm gonna let some jumped up suit get the better of me? Sure, the last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. The phony trial with a phony lawyer. It was all played out by you, the biggest phony of all! Oh dear. Sir, Jesus! What? What's going on? It looks like a blackout! Well done. Trite. I saved my 17th cup of coffee just for you. Savor it. While you watch your caged prey. Right? You caught a tiger by his toe, but if this one hollers, you won't be let go. The prosecution will be sure to take care of Mr. Tigray, won't you, Mr. Goodell? He is being arrested on suspicion of the murder of Glenn Elg, Your Honor. Fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a very grave error. Miss Bird was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was. And in the absence of genuine evidence, but the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. He very nearly got away with everything if it wasn't for that one slip of the tongue. Furio Tigre is a truly frightening criminal. Ah, huh. the truly frightening one. Is that defense attorney over there? Godot. Well, I am now in a position to deliver my verdict. This court fights the defendant, Maggie Bird. Not guilty. And it's about time to. That is all. This court is adjourned. Alright. Mr. Wright, I, I... I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in all that trouble a month ago. But now I feel like I can forgive him. Hey, that wasn't me, Maggie. That was the tiger. Look, Nick, in the doorway. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, guess I'll be heading off then. See you around, pal. Wait! Detective Gumshoe. Uh, oh yeah. Congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. I knew you were innocent all along. Why didn't you say that in your testimony, then? Huh? Oh, well... I was... Well, guess I'll be heading off, then. See you around. Wait up, detective! He just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you. It's thanks to him that we got the medication bottle. That wasn't even of any use! But... It's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly! Detective Gum, she was just running around in circles. Poor guy. Looks like she still isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? 
Yeah, Maya's right. I should help Gumshoe out. It's clear he needs it. Uh, Maggie? You know, Detective Gumshoe's really worried about you through all this. I wanted to believe that, sir! But on that first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up! He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. He doubted me, that's why! He thought I might have done it! I've got to prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. I know. I'll give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. I got the perfect thing. Here you are, a present to celebrate your freedom. That's a present from Detective Gumshoe, made with a ton of love. He said you lost weight and was worried about you. Detective Gumshoe. I... I actually really like weenies, you know? Did you guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know? Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? Um, is it okay if I eat this now? Well then. So, how is it, Maggie? It's... it's really good! So the case of Phony vs. Genuine comes to an end. The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. And who knows, maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. And that puts a bow on Case 3. Isn't that lovely? A new episode has been added. Case 4 has been added. Turnabout Beginnings. So we're going to save here. And that wraps things up for Case 3, Recipe for Turnabout. Next time on Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations, we begin Case 4, Turnabout Beginnings. And it's actually going to be a short one, so we'll see you then.